A lot of Zimbabweans were surprised when they heard that the African giant is managed by his mother. Momagers are rare, so because of that, I embarked on a journey to look for one of the various momages in Zimbabwe. So I finally met Florence Chaurura, who is managing her son, Matsre Shasha, and she had a lot to tell about her journey. Here out. Us today and tell us a little bit more. So firstly, I'd like to know when you started um, managing Matsre Shasha. I started managing my session in the month of July 2018 after he had um, completed his uh, degree at the Midland State University, uh, his de degree for music. Um, so that's when we agreed that he, had to, he was ready to start his um, music career full time. Okay, so how, is, how has it been? How has it been the journey? Was it challenging or interesting? How has it been? The journey has been um, challenging, um, interesting, frustrating, and rewarding. And I'll explain what, I'm, what I mean by challenging. It was challenging because I was coming from a background where I had no knowledge of the art industry, per se, and the showbiz industry. So managing an artist um, was a tall order for me. It was like starting from scratch. I had no contacts. I had no a foundation to stand on. I had no knowledge of the art, um, even how to produce music. I had no knowledge of that. So that's how challenging it was. Um, starting to understand and appreciate how a song is recorded. That's where I started from. And uh, starting to understand how to make sure that when the song is produced, uh, then make a video and then distribute it. Um, and, and of course, we needed uh, connections and and knowing the know-how of where to take the music. And that's how challenging it was. And interesting, uh, when I say interesting, I mean uh, managing an artist, a child artist, a boy child who was, um, who's now 26, and being a mother, I'm um, over 50, in Zimbabwe, was, um, I found myself in a place where a lot of men didn't appreciate and understand that it, I, I was being serious. So whenever I turned up with my son, they just thought it was mother and son. Mother is passionate about the son's art. And the, uh, that overshadowed my son's gifting. Because they would look at me as a mother who is more interested in uh, what the son is doing and how the son could, could do without actually paying attention to the son's gift, which is um, what we, we were. And um, also, when I say interesting, I mean, culturally, a 50-year-old mother um, does not go and start to hang around with uh, young people who are playing guitars and singing. We are supposed to be doing Ruazano and all that and church business and perhaps staying at home and looking after grandchildren. But I, I, I became different, which um, in the men dominated industry was interesting to me. I would have said challenging, but I think to me, when I watched them uh, with their, the way they looked at me, I found it very interesting that that's the way they would look at a passionate mother who is trying to push her son to getting into the business. And then when I say frustrating, um, it was frustrating because each time I would um, try to um, find information, I struggled. And I want to say thank you to Mono Mkundu. Uh, he was my go-to person each time because I had no idea where to go and uh, what to do. So he'd come home, I'd call him. He's the first um, producer who first uh, produced Batra's first song. And then he would also uh, direct me to other producers and other people who do the backing vocals and so forth and so forth. And when I needed guitarists uh, to join the band, I would also run to Mono. He became the my go-to person, like I'll say, he played a very pivotal role or a platform, he gave me a platform to sort of network with the rest of the industry. And that's how frustrating it was. And then when I say rewarding, um, as a mother, when you hold your own child's hand and you see them grow, like if I look back right now, Batsy has grown in all his formats, in all the music industry uh, facets, um, from producing music, he didn't know how, what to do, he now knows how to put together a song, he now knows which producers to go to. He now knows which um, videographers, uh, video editors to go to, uh, which studios would accept music, uh, media, uh, radio stu studios 
to go to who would accept his music, all that. And he's got a, a following on social media, which is um, very active and interactive of over 63,000 people. So for me, it's quite rewarding as a mother. And I see that whatever investment that I've put in is uh, started working. It's been four years now, um, working with Batrai as his manager, as a mother. Okay, you also mentioned that you're managing his social media and him as a brand. And also you're managing yourself as your own brand. How is it going? You're also a businesswoman. <laughs> How are you managing all yes, of this? Yes, and, and that's a very good question. I, I keep asking myself, how do I even do this? Because um, behind all this um, singing and producing videos and playing live shows with Batrai, I also am, am a mother to two children and a wife with a husband. And I'm also a business person. So running those uh, three facets has been quite challenging. I found myself neglecting myself. And I also run a church. I, we, we've got a church that we're running in Fakose, and I'm the founder of that church. So I also prepare sermons and try and uh, minister on Sunday and run the day-to-day -day, uh, challenges of running a church. So I, I think I'm just the one gifted person who is multifaceted, say it that way. Okay. Uh, although I found myself neglecting my own brand mm. um, for the benefit of Batrai. If you look at my own brand, I've got... Uh, four, 14 and a half thousand followers I could have done more than that if mm -hmm. I was giving it attention but I had to give Batrai more attention on his social media platforms that's why he's at 63,000 right now uh, followers and he's running his um, career his career is moving on an up on trend however I still try and balance my business my social life my church and art business for Batrai okay uh, you also say that the first year you were focusing on pushing his brand when you started managing him. Yes. Uh, how was it since he had no knowledge of the music industry or did you have any knowledge of the music industry? To be honest, I was zero. I didn't even know how to produce a song. I didn't even know how a studio would look like. That's how ignorant I was. I just knew that my son is good at singing because I'd seen him sing at my church. But uh, armed with passion, you know where there's a will, um, the way is paved and when the student is ready a teacher will arise and of course um, I had the knowledge of networking so I knew I need to find information so I went out to the art council I need I even went out to Zimura to try and find out what to do uh, when a child started singing so I went knocking on so many doors I don't think there's any manager that I've not spoken to from job raiser to even Winky D's manager, I know Banda, I know a Japanese manager, I know everyone. I've spoken to them all, trying to figure out how to navigate myself into the music industry. And I've come to a place where my phone uh, has got all the numbers of people who mentor in the industry. And so I, it's a comfortable place right now, but it was a lot of fact finding. I had to find a way and make a way. And one uh, skill that I was armed with was a net networking skill and the passion and desire to go out and make it happen. That's what helped me. Okay. Uh, I, we also want to know who came up with the idea of you, the mother, being the manager for Batrai Shasha's brand. I imposed myself. Okay. <laughs> Batrai would never forgive me for that. Because he thought there were other people better than his mom. Because his mom was mom. We were supposed to be a mother to him and uh, not a manager. Not a manager. But um, coming from a business background myself, mm. I wanted to understand the business side of his career so that I could make a decision whether to make him find another career to go to or and actually understand where the money comes from, from the uh, art business, art industry. That's why I said I needed to start him off so that when I hand him over to anyone who's going to take over from him, yeah. I would have known every facet of the, of the art industry, of the business, and the music production and the live performances. Because Basrai wants to be a live performer. He is a live performer. He wants to go out of Zimbabwe and do uh, festivals. That's where he likes. That's what he likes. Festivals around the world. He wants to travel. And for me to be able to help him to get there, I need to understand the business. So I said I was going to start off with him. Okay. So can you tell us the advantages and disadvantages of a mother or a relative being the manager? 
the advantages are enormous. Um, music industry is very challenging. Uh, it can be disheartening and discouraging. But when you're a parent, um, you go through the emotions with your child of feeling discouraged, of feeling motivated, of uh, putting the resources. Then, uh, we are in a very difficult economic condition right now. So the little money that you have, you probably sit down and say, okay, can we produce a song? Can we do a video? Can we go and uh, invest here so that things can work? Um, without that information and passion, you can easily shelf it because there's a lot of investment that is needed um, to a child who is going through a growth of being an artist. So if you are a divorced parent, meaning divorced from the art, from the business and from whatever is happening to the child, you can easily tell them to go and find a job because it's expensive. But when you are a part of it, you see uh, the fairest as a parent and you invest in the child and you make sure things happen, especially if the child is gifted. So that's the advantage, the big advantage is being there and being able to sacrifice uh, to make sure your child gets the best attention. However, the disadvantage is um, when you're a mother like myself and managing my son, I you've got the big voice. Big voice is a mother and the big voice is a manager. So the child is no say. There's so many places and times that we have argued with my son. He wanted something else and I wanted to uh, invest in a different song or a different video or I would say to him, this Sunday let's just cancel this show. I really want to do church, being a visionary of a church. He's not allowed to do any shows on Sunday. He knows he has to be in church because he's a choir director. So all those uh, limits him sometimes and he gets frustrated because he's constrained into his mother's arms. <laughs> Financially, he's at business and being a, a, a son. So everything falls under his mother's handbag. Okay, so he doesn't have much say. And he can't really argue and throw a tantrum at me being a mother. He knows I, whatever I mean, I mean well. But sometimes meaning well could be actually defeating the whole growth uh, sometimes. Okay. Yes. And I'm quite aware of that. So I try and minimize. Although I feel I do interfere sometimes with his growth um, using my own feelings. Whatever he likes is a song. If I don't like it, I'll probably not push it hard enough. And if he's got a song that he likes, I will probably jump in and and propagate it and let everyone know before he wants to release it and we're always fighting mm -hmm. yeah that's 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 the disadvantage but they're good disadvantages anyway yeah. because it's all in good faith they're not too bad no but sometimes we hear managers are uh, embezzle funds of the artists and some artists they end up changing managers each and every time but you that kills the brand yes that kills the brand yes yeah. Um, the, the, the advantage of uh, me being ma managing Batsy is um, he's, he can never have money embezzled mm -hmm. because I've got a, an office set up with an administrator who's totally divorced from anything else who runs his administrative work. So if there's an invoice that is to be raised, it comes through my office. If there's any show that is to be um, done, it comes through my office. If there's any video that is to be shot, all, it's all paid through invoicing and the person has to collect money from our office Manager, if I've got to get a manager right now, you'll have no um, administrative work to do because there's already an administrator and he won't handle any money unless they have to travel, then he's given travel allowance. So he's safe that way, I think. Okay. So what about when he performs his live bands and wherever he'll be performing? Are you always there for him? Are you always there as a manager to see what's going on, to help him out? performance the band i am i am very involved in putting together a band i know how to put together a band right now so i've managed to put a band together and then we do rehearsals when they're doing rehearsals i'm there to support them and also to give my suggestions and then when they are doing live shows i'm there i drive the band most of the time late at night for safety reasons i make sure i drive them and um, i'm also man make sure i am there when they put out um, the sound engineer putting out all the instruments together and uh, making sure everything is on point and we are on time and I've set that's those standards so if a manager comes through you will not have any problems because that's right he's got a functioning band he's got a PA system and he knows how to manage time the band knows I'm very fussy with time and making sure they look right all those standards I've put them in place okay okay so you have set 
your standards for for his brand yes. do you think that you're going to part ways uh, anytime soon definitely i'm in the process of disconnecting not um forever but i'm distancing myself so that he can i mean he's at a place where he needs somebody out there who can do more than me i'm mm -hmm. over 50 and i've got my own limitations and my own constraints so he now needs a person who is passionate enough to be above me in terms of being out there and being hands-on and uh, networking and connecting that's why with the bigger world whilst i'm behind the scenes managing the a back office and I say big office is the administrative work. Mm -hmm. I want so to be in office. Still be there I, no, I'm not going away. <laughs> yeah. Anyone who's coming to manage but try it's uh, bad news. But 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 this mom who managed but behind the scenes. Yeah. She yeah. will have a say in his money, she okay. will have a say in his travel, she will have a say in everything. But I won't be out there with Batsy. So mm -hmm. whoever is coming is going to do more legwork and making sure more the band works okay. and they go into the companies to negotiate yeah, yeah. Uh, and I'll do the administrative work with my administrator in my office. Okay, yes. That makes sense. So yes. you'll always be there. I'll be behind the scenes, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> At the end okay. of it all, I'll know everything, yes. Okay, so can you tell us a bit more about family and managing Batsy? I've got three children and um, Batsy being the youngest, he's 26. The first one is 31, the second one is 28. The two, uh, first and second, they're in the United Kingdom with their father. They all come and go. We decided to move back to Zimbabwe in uh, 2018 to pursue Batsi's uh, career. Um, so when it talks about family, there's me and Batsi. And a lot of people know Batsi and his mom. Mm. And they wonder whether there's anyone around them. Yes, there are people, but they are not in Zimbabwe. That's why me and Batsi are just a couple. He's my son, he's my guardian, he's my go-to, mm -hmm. he's my runner, he's my artist, he's my business partner, he's everything. <laughs> okay, you yes. talked about distancing yourself from Batsy a bit uh -huh. and maybe you want to focus on your brand. Can you tell us a little bit more about your own brand as Florence? Um, I have a brand which I'm actually now, I've, I've grown to have so many faces. And a lot of people wonder why I am, because with Batsy, I'm an artist myself. I do a lot of acting. Okay. I've done a stint with uh, Bus Stop TV. I've done with uh, Niza Boom. I've um, done a lot of skits with Batsy on his page. And it, they have had more than 500,000 um, views. Oh, people love my acting. Nice. And um, so what happens is that that face of an actor, when you come to Batsy's page, you get to see me because I do some skits with Batsy. Mm. And then when you've viewed uh, Bastop TV, I've done, I did more than 14 episodes with them. Mm. And that also grew my uh, acting okay. face. Yeah. So people know that I, I do acting. And then I've got a business face. Okay. I'm so much into business. So somebody who runs their own uh, factory. We make clothes. We've got a shop in town. We run a, an a air freighting business from UK to Zimbabwe. And um and many other businesses that I run. And for now, um, from the age of fifty, I decided to um, run a church. We opened a church in Mfakose, which is called a community church, with the vision of wanting to change mindsets through the word of God. Mm -hmm. um, I like to grow human beings, and I knew that the only way to do that was use the word of God to change people's mindsets from expecting miracles, mm -hmm. uh, running after my demoni and all that. Mm -hmm. So our change mandate is to make sure we empower the people in Fakose and bring them together as a community. I was born there and I'm still very much attached there. My mother's house is still there. So we right now started building a church there and Batrai is very involved. He's the choir director there. And so he knows every Sunday he has to be in front of people in Fakose and the church is growing very fast because I teach real life lessons and people are desperate to hear how to manage themselves and how to grow themselves without expecting any miraculous uh, ways happening to them. So that's who we are. A brand, which is Mfakose Community Church, me being the visionary, I teach life skills and the vision is to empower and to bring the community together. So we are so much into love, honesty, reliability, self-growth and making sure we get out of um, the redress and the focus of the systems that were placed there by Smith. We want to get out of those systems of yeah. child pregnancy, child abuse, drug abuse. 
we are so much into teaching people how to run away from that. Mm, that's that's wonderful. All right. So can you tell us um, how you are managing your relationship with Batsy since you're emotionally connected? How how are you separating business and family? You know, the emotions. <laughs> Um, you mean Batsy's business, I suppose? Yes, he's okay. uh, his business. I, he, kn he knows. I, I think I have grown to, because I teach a lot about emotions. One of my biggest subjects is emotional intelligence. So I've taught my children to be able to understand oh, their feelings. Mm -hmm. So I also practice that myself. Mm -hmm. myself. So um, being a mother, Batsy's attached to me via the Amber Like Accord. So the emotions, we cannot run away from them. Mm -hmm. So whenever we have my, um, our challenges, we sit down and talk. Um, sometimes he has got his own ideas of what he wants to do. Like right now he's in Blue Air and he was so upset that I wasn't coming there. Mm. And I had to do a bit of counseling. I will never <laughs> always be there. He has to learn to run. He's a 26-year-old man who's supposed to be getting married. So he has to be independent. So he separated himself. And I said, don't talk to me until you come back. So he hasn't spoken to me. And I'm sure he's crying. He looks at his phone and he wants to call me to tell me what's going on there. I said, shut down the, yourself from your mom and enjoy the space in Blue Air. And I'm training to do that. So yes, there are emotions uh, for parent, as a parent, but uh, we manage them because we, the first port of call is being aware that okay. there will be emotions. And when we are aware, we then manage them. That's where we are. Okay. Yes. How about uh, diverting him? Don't you end up diverting him to do stuff that you prefer? Yes, I do that. all the time. Um, now it's no longer diversion. Mm. It's, a, it's a mandate. Mandate. Okay. <laughs> but he knows that we have a church and mm. his mandate is to manage the church choir. He's the church director there and he leads our praise and worship team. And he knows mm. that before his mom preaches, he has to sing. So if he's not there, he knows that I miss him. So he doesn't like to do anything on a Sunday, not even a show, because he's got that obligation that my, oh, my mom, he, I have to sing before he preaches, before she preaches, okay. and I have to be there for the choir. That has been going on for the past four years. But um, I've also asked him to train other artists in the church so that we don't feel the void when it goes. So we've got other artists that are up and coming that is grooming to hold the mic, to sing. They're all gifted. So I'm happy to for with that de development. Okay, okay. Thank you so much, Florence, for sharing your story as an African mother. Thank you so much, dear. Thank I you. appreciate it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video and you got enlightened. See you next time.